Hello violas, welcome to the second instalment of my tips, I guess, on the Janacek first movement. I blithely promised you last time to whistle through the rest of the first movement and then promptly discovered that there is only one more page. So today is on the second page of the first movement and um, I think it's a good thing actually to take a bit more time on this Janacek. Um, Given that the lockdown's going to last for a while, we might not meet for a while. We don't want to uh, race through the Janicek and then have to start another piece. So that's my uh, thinking. So uh, today, second page, and request from the first was to play a little bit more, um, demonstrate, and then talk about it. So I'll do that. And do get in touch if you've got any other suggestions or anything you didn't like or anything you did like. And um, thank you for all the lovely comments that I've had. Um, so, top of the second page. Page two with a fantastic chorale. This is just you and the second violins. First violins aren't doing anything. Um, so I've taken out the P because this is your real song. It's a beautiful legato chorale like theme. And the cellos are doing a sort of pizzicato ostinato underneath you. So you can really sing this. And I don't know how much the microphone is picking up but I've been trying to do all the bulges. There are little bulges and, over, and an overarching crescendo to the middle to about bar 43, 44, and then we come away, but there are still bulges within. So really sing, though. I don't think, don't be too hesitant there. This is seconds and viola, big tune. So um, then bar 46, the last note. I think the character completely changes. I've actually put a little staccato marking and I want to just change the character. It becomes more urgent, there are more accents. We're building to a bigger crescendo and it's uh, more dynamic maybe. <laughs> you heard a slightly more triumphant tone, lots of nice bows, lots of vibrato on the accents, and I stopped my bow just a little bit between each accent, say in bar 49, and this little tiny stop so you can give it a bit of a ping back. Now, once we get to 54, the last note, you will notice I've put it on a down bow. Now, I love this, a really quiet contrast, and it's deliberately on a down bow. I know that's awkward, but that means 55, you can do a lovely portato up bow and then accent on the down bow. So it really works out. And I find down bow portato very tricky to play really beautifully. So I know you will notice in bar 57, I've done exactly the same for the inner part. And actually, I would love more of you on the inner part because that's super important within the whole piece, within, within the um, sections there. The B flat less so, although you notice B flat's people I've actually given you more bow but I think if you're if you want the tune go to the bottom that's the important bit I'll go from the last note of 54 <laughs> Really 
really get stuck into that portato here, this bit. Really put a lot of weight in. And drag your bow across and enjoy it. And a nice accent. And then triumphant, I think, with the bulges. Lots and lots of bulges. So, it carries on in this manner. And then um, we get to Carmo. And I think before Carmo, we're going to just ease the tempo. And I, I don't know who's conducting me or Tim. We're... we're we're, we're deciding. Um, it depends on when we come back. Uh, so into the Carmo, I think we need big looking glasses and maybe arrows just to see what's going on and be prepared. So by the time you're at bar 67, we're actually the quavers are a lot more sort of calm and measured. I'll go from 63. <laughs> from the Carmo all the way to the end and then talk about it. Okay, so the Carmo, again, little bulges, nice and steady, please. Um, so you're making it still melodious, but much, much calmer. Just a little release before we go towards the end. And you notice, first of all, at 69, we've got PP. So really float your bows, lots of airy sound. The thing with PP, I find, if you really restrict yourself and go, you don't really get the best sound. It doesn't project. So I tend to use a bit more bow and less uh, weight, a lot, hardly any weight at all, and lots of vibrato. And you notice it projects, but it sounds sweet and very, very quiet and intimate. And then you notice at 2071, we've got PPP. And you know what I'm like about dynamics. So you could make this really magical, the PPP, really special. Then, I think 72, I know it says the crescendo and accelerando, the next bar, but I think just be prepared to sort of move a little bit. And it's really ratcheting up now. We're getting much more um, exciting. The end is in sight. Um, and I've taken out the weird slurs over your triplets. I just don't think doing all this is going to really be helpful for anyone. And I think we need to drive the energy. So I think I've just taken out very Then when it comes in 60, sorry, 76, there I want the up, up, up. That's the same as the seconds. And um, I think that works quite nicely, actually. But here at 74, definitely separate bows. So from the crescendo and the chalandre. <laughs> a lot of bow. Um, lots of nice bow on the accent in 76. And again, you could stop the bow before the accent. And then 79, just enjoy, go for it. But not so much that you don't stop in time for 80. 
Now, bar 80 is a return of the entire opening. Well, not the entire opening, but you're really hearkening back to those opening chords where we were all in unison. So you bring that back and with the cellos, and it's got to be really dramatic. So stop your triplets in time to be able to get right to the heel and do like just like the beginning. <laughs> And so FF, really, really go for it. Enjoy full bows, retake, and uh, then forte, not too much less. And then you can really come away for the 84, bar 84. <laughs> so calming, you're calming, the motive is dying. We've got to the end and there's no more drama. And then just really lovely and still. <laughs> And faded away for the till the conductor brings you off so i hope that's been helpful and i think it's a great piece lots of drama so get stuck into the drama and enjoy playing it because it's not overly challenging the first movement so you can really kind of enjoy those dynamics and what the piece is all about and what he's trying to say hope this has been helpful for you